Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I want to do a quick video, I'm hoping that this will be really quick, creating a travel tag using just the designs on the machine. This is all in the hoop. If you've been wanting to try an in the hoop project, this is one. In the hoop is a lot like applique, except you actually get a product at the end instead of applying it onto another product. I hope that makes sense. So this is one that we digitized in SoArt. You can look for the videos for that. Um, this is a design that's already on our brother. I have a brother SE425, but that's just one number of a lot of models that are pretty much the same machine. So you probably have this butterfly or something just as beautiful. All right, so this is a digitized one. This is one that I created to see if we could do this. The answer is yes, but my dummy self didn't um, cut the window. I didn't cut the stabilizer that was behind the window. So like in this case, you could put your finger here and you can see, well in here, even if I cut this marine vinyl part off, it would only show the black stabilizer. I don't know. Let's see if you can see in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that should be cut and it should be a window. And that way, whenever I cut this part open, it's a window. I decided to leave it like this because I want to try and see if we can put um, heat transfer vinyl onto a onto marine vinyl. So stay tuned for that video as well. I didn't cut this that open because I wanted to try that on this. So. This is gonna be our trial. I did do another one and I got distracted about a thousand times so it did not work. And I threw it in the trash, which I don't throw anything in the trash, but I was just so mad. <laughs> I try to reuse everything as much as I can. So what you're gonna need is your hoop, hooped up with a stabilizer of your choice. I have garden fabric. Because this is gonna be kind of an all weather project and we're not going to wash it. It doesn't really need special stabilizer unless you want it really stiff. Then I would go for using, you know, like the paper stabilizer or something that will make it really stiff. Mine are flexible. I think that that it looks fine. They stay fine. Um, long run, maybe I don't know, but I haven't had any complaints from the people I've been giving them to over the years. So we're going to go with that. This stabilizer is fine. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to need some clear, packaging material or this is template material only because I got a big piece really cheap from Hobby Lobby when I was looking for clear vinyl. You can also use clear vinyl. Clear vinyl is a lot more flexible so um, it'll have a similar flexibility as the marine vinyl. So marine vinyl you can find it almost anywhere that you can buy fabric especially at um, uh, places that you'll be getting um, upholstery stuff for. That's definitely a great place to find it. I found this at Joann's. It's $19.99 a yard, but don't let that scare you. Just get a couple of inches because it's a three foot wide piece. So I got 12 inches for $6. There, it was on sale, but it was still a great deal. Um, so with your, you're gonna need two pieces. Two pieces of marine vinyl plus a couple pieces of scraps to create this loop part. So I'm going to run and go grab some of those real quick and you're going to want some some kind of way to hook this onto things with a key ring or with one of those little um, key fob thingamajiggers that hook. I don't remember what they're called right now. For a precise cutout you're going to want an exacto knife. And if you're a kid, you're going to want adult supervision, please. If you're not a kid, you might still want adult supervision. <laughs> um, your embroidery scissors so that you can snip the jump stitches. And two sets of, of stabilizer because we're doing two hoopings. I probably should have said that. There's two hoopings. We've got to do the backing first and then the front. And then we sew the backing onto the front while it's still in the hoop. All right. So let's get started. We're going to do the back part first and then I'm going to run and grab my scrap. Hopefully, oh, how did I get that? That's like magic. Look at that. 
That was just on my table from other stuff I've been doing. That is a perfect piece. I feel so lucky. Yeah. All right, so you'll need a little piece. That looks like it's about one and a half inches long. Okay. Let's get start started. We've been getting started. <laughs> okay, so here, we're just gonna go into the shapes and we're gonna choose number five, which is a rectangle. We're gonna choose stitch number 10. We're gonna adjust, layout, size, and we're gonna max it out. That was my giant cat landing on the counter. Oh my gosh, he likes to sleep on top of the refrigerator. Okay, I just have a piece that covers the whole thing, but if you're trying to maintain fabric, um, or, you know, trying to save fabric, let's see, what's a good, I hope that that works. If you're trying to conserve fabric, then you can go up here to this button right here, and it'll show you where it's going to sew. And then you can place your thing or you can just go ahead and sew this out on the stabilizer first and then run it again to tack it down. I think everything looks good and I like my scraps so that I can use them again for other projects. So from here, we're just going to, and it's just going to sew out a nice rectangle for us. All right. Now we're going to go back up to the screen. It'll say finish sewing, choose OK. And then we're going to get all the way out of here. Click OK. All the way out of here too. And we're going to go into our shapes. Hi, Bruiser. Adjust layout. And we're just going to make this as small as we can make it, which isn't much. And then we'll go back down to the stitch out. And I'm going to put this in fast forward. So see you guys in a second. All right, so this is the back. We have to stitch first. <laughs> Try not to bump the camera. It looks so nice. All right, so we can pop this out and load up the second one. Okay, so we're gonna get out of here by choosing back, 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 back. Click OK to delete all patterns get out of here and now we are going to run this as a die line because we need to know where to put our ribbon um, and I know I keep calling it a ribbon I don't know what else to call it right off the top of my head so we'll go in here and we'll choose number five we'll choose the number 10 stitch again choose adjust layout size max that out okay and Put your press your foot down. I'm not going to move the camera. I'm just going to let it stitch out, okay?
click OK and leave it. We're going to sew again. This is going to be sewn quite a few times today. Okay, go ahead and get it off of the machine. All right, so once you have it off of the machine, you're going to grab your little piece, your little ribbon piece, your loop, and get a kind of substantially long piece of tape and place this. Make sure that this is on this side because this is going to be the side that has the opening. This has to be on the side with the opening. The final stitch that we do is going to be this same stitch maxed out, but we're only going to let it sew these three sides. So if it's on, if your tag is on this side, your loop is on this side, ribbon, whatever I keep calling it, um, it's going to uh, sew it in there and leave this side open, which I guess isn't horrible, but this kind of makes it, helps it close. You'll see. Okay, so you just need to tape this outside of the thing, making sure to leave a little bit inside so that you have, you know, stability. We're going to grab our piece of plastic, get the cat hair off of it. Uh, I used to have a sewing business. And I stopped doing it because I couldn't keep up with the pet hair. <laughs> it's on everything. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay, you don't really have to do this, but I want to do it for a little bit of security. Okay, and then we'll put it back onto the machine. See you in a second. That's finished sewing. We're going to come back up here to the screen. And we are going to make it smaller. Down to 5.7 actually. Okay. That's going to give us our window. put a couple more in there like like in this how it's run a few times in between I think it just looks cute makes it a little bit more eye-catching for the person who's trying to get their luggage so I went up to six on here Okay, we are done sewing this part. All we need to sew now is the back part onto this, but we have a couple steps in between. 
So let's go ahead and move the camera and then I will see you guys in a second. All right, so now that we have it off of the machine, we're gonna turn it over, grab as many of these stray pieces as we can. And I've seen people use a razor to do this part. Um, I'm just gonna use my little scissors because hopefully most of this stuff will get sewn in and you won't even see it. So grab your X-Acto knife. If you don't have an X-Acto knife, it's okay. Just use your embroidery scissors. This stuff cuts really, really, really easily. Okay, that's a lot cleaner than I would have ever cut in a million years, I promise you. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that is so true. <laughs> okay, so now we have our window on. We're going to take our original project. Let's go ahead and cut this stabilizer down. Get out of here. <laughs> so if you ever wonder what to do with scrap pieces of um, stabilizer like this that you can't keep using, if you have children in your family, you can always take these, cut them in half, or even cut them into shapes, put a little bit of stuffing, or even stuff it with the scraps of this. And turn them into little pillows for their dollhouses or their, um, you know, sets that they play with. Alright, so we're going to take this guy and we're going to line it up onto this. Okay? And you just have to line the corners up to corners. And it will shift a little bit as you're doing it, but that's okay. Just make sure that the very last one that you do matches. So I know that that's going to shift because I am not that good of an eyeballer. So whenever I open up this side, it's probably going to make me pull. Oh no, I actually did pretty good. <laughs> so if you could see that, you just need to make sure that these ones line up. Try not to get your tape in the sew line. And when we're all done, this top part will not be sewn. So we're going to sew this last part out, but you have to catch it at that last part. Okay? Hit your, your scissors button and stop it. Or it will sew all the way through, which isn't the end of the world. You can just use the seam, seam ripper. But this is preferred. Just try to catch it before it goes through. Okay, so this is it. We're on. It's on the backing. We flip it over. And once we're all done, we'll cut this window out and you'll see the clear underneath. Oops. <laughs> okay. Okay, so from here, we're going to go back to size. We're going to max it out. Okay. And then we're going to put our presser foot down. And the reason why we started this up here and on this side is because you'll see where it started every time. It started over here in this corner. So we know that it's going to start over here. We want it we want to stop it itself over here. So we need this to be up here so that we don't have it sewn in. Hope that makes sense. All right. Now let's go. It's going to sew on our backing. I let it go too far. That's all right. You just have to have an opening big enough to put your card in there. That's all. All right, so I want to run that again. I'm going to go back, back, click OK, go and start that over. OK. Press your foot still down. Keep my finger on the pulse. Mm. 
I like to run it twice just to have that final stitch be really strong. You don't have to do that, but I just like it. Okay, so it's all done. I'm going to pop it out and I'll show you how to cut it out. Hold on one second. All right, it's popped out. Now all you really need are your scissors, your X-Acto knife, and your project. Okay, so we're going to cut it out on this side, this side, and this side only at first, okay? Make sure you cut really close, but not so close that it pulls that it pulls the stitching down into your cutting. So come over like, I don't know, quarter of an inch or however much you think that is. Cause I'm not that good at that. <laughs> and you can round your corners if you want. I probably will at the end. So, oops, let's get that too. I would normally worry about that, but I don't want the video to be longer than it has to be with me fussing with stuff. All right, so let's get all of our stuff, all the tape off as much as we can. Let's go ahead. Forgot there's all these strays. <laughs> Okay, so we can't cut this whole thing at once because we'll cut our little loop. So we have to pull these each apart from each other and cut. So at the front, we're going to cut, but we're going to cut while we're looking at this so we can keep our eye on our stitch. And the goal here is just to make it as straight as you possibly can. Okay, and then in the back, oh, there's one in the middle as well. You can trim all of this up with your X-Acto knife later. Okay, and then this back one, let's do it this way. Keep our eye on that in the front. There we go. Okay, so now we have our piece, our project. You can look inside this one and now you can see the difference between what this was supposed to do. Get out of there. See how that's all dark? You're supposed to be able to see the light side of the marine vinyl. Okay, so all that stuff out of here. And look at this piece of scrap we have. It's perfect for the next one for the loop. <laughs> Somebody just pulled up at my house. Talk about timing. So there it is. It's all done. Let's grab a let's grab a business card and try to get this done before the dog goes nuts. There we go. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, that's me. That's me, not the design. Why is that not going all the way back? Oh, because I'm trying to shove it in the edge on the inside. You might have to struggle a little bit, but there we go. <laughs> That's so cute. It turned out so cute. You guys go ahead and cut your corner corners, cut your corners. I'm going to do that later when I'm not in a hurry. I don't want to mess anything up, but there we go. And then to put this thing on, it's very simple. You should grab something, get this open. Do that through the loop. Oops, didn't catch that on camera. 
go right through the loop then let it twist then it's on there yay <laughs> All right, so this is the one we created on the machine with the designs already on the machine, not having to digitize anything. This is the one that we digitize. I think they both turned out really cute and they're both as equally functional. I will talk to you guys later.